Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to share how I use Phrasebox in my setup. Phrasebox is a plugin from Venomode and this will not be a tutorial of the Phrasebox plugin, but I do want to do a quick overview for those that are totally unfamiliar. So here's the Phrasebox screen at the top. You have your uh, patch area where you can recall and save patches over to the right hand side at the top. You have phrases. Phrases are basically snapshots of what's in the piano roll and down here in the graph. Uh, below the phrases is the piano roll. There's eight regular lanes and uh, a bunch of special lanes above them. Some of that we'll go into. Below that is a graph for all of the different attributes that are associated with notes and for the continuous controllers that you can also send out of this uh, plugin into your digital audio workstation or DAW. On the left hand side are the parameters you can set for adjustments you can make during playback and generation of these different uh, patterns. Before we go any further with that, I have to show you how it's set up. So in Bitwig, it's pretty easy because you can kind of route MIDI wherever you want to go. So in this particular setup, um, we're going to start off with Thesis at the top. And Thesis is a plugin from Sugarbytes. It outputs MIDI as well. And I've set up Thesis to go through this eight step pattern and just put out these notes in this eight steps. I want to put out at this velocity for this length of time. So it's very simple to do over there. I've told it to go at a tempo of whole notes. So um, the only thing you would also have to adjust is this needs to be pulled down to uh, do an octave below of where it normally puts out. And then information in thesis is gonna go down the scalar. And for that to work, you would come over to your right and go to your devices uh, tab, go all the way down into the categories until you get to routing in the routing, you'll see a note receiver. Place one of those note receivers on this track and say that you want to get the information from not just the thesis track, but the actual thesis plugin like this. And I want to feed that information into Scalar from Plugin Boutique. Now, uh, Scalar is going to give me some chords. Thesis is going to pick one of these gray chords up at the top and uh, that information is corresponds to these chords at the bottom. Now, the way you set that up is you can come in and you can just grab a song. And after you do, you say copy to builder. I'm gonna overwrite what's there just for purposes of this video. And this is section C down here. This is where you kind of do what you have to do. And so I've told Scalar when the incoming MIDI comes in, bind it to section C. And I want you to do a little bit of voice locking here to keep all of the notes kind of grouped together. So I'm going to change that back to alternative two and hit yes. So we got the thesis information going in the scalar. Two different plugins grab the information from scalar. Phrasebox does it with a note receiver. Once again, over in your devices up under the routing uh, section. And also addictive keys. Now I have set up addictive keys just to be an electric piano to remind me of what the chords were uh, in their entirety before they got chopped up. So I threw another one of those note receiver plugs on. I set it to the scalar track, the scalar plugin. And then uh, that information is going to go into addictive keys and just just play chords it's not a big deal but i'm going to let you listen to what that sounds like all by itself and that's his thesis feeding scalar going into addictive keys uh nothing else Okay, thrilling. So um, that's there just as a reminder, and we're gonna change a lot of stuff going down the line, and occasionally I like to be reminded of what's actually coming out of Scalar. Now to the meat of it. Right now I have three VSTs set up at the bottom, Ace and Zebra, both from uh, Yuhi, the wonderful folks over there, and uh, Obscurium, which is also from Sugar Bites, which we'll get into in a little bit. So I'm gonna mute Addictive Keys, and I've told Ace, I want you to go up and grab the information 
that's coming out of phrase box and I've got a channel filter set up right here and this channel filter uh, works in correlation with the channels inside of phrase box so um, right before we go back to phrase box uh, I have set up ace just to kind of handle some bass notes so I picked exodes buttery preset and I have it set up for one and two so let's open up phrase box again phrase box has a feature that you can set for each one of these lanes each eight of all of the lanes actually but um, for this video I'm only gonna mess with the bottom eight so basically uh, if you click on one of those numbers you can assign it to a MIDI channel you can leave them all at one you can put half of them on channel one half on two or you can assign each one of them to their own channel so I have a preset here video two, and in this preset I have assigned each one of these lanes to a separate channel now when the chords are fed in I can decide which one of these lanes goes to which one of my instruments so we're going to start off with ace once again it's nothing magnificent to start off with but this is more or less just so you get the gist of what's happening here so uh, let me open phrase box again and we'll listen right now um, tell you what let me take that off of channel four and what you're going to hear is just the information on this first row coming through now I'm going to click on channel four I'm going to mute everything out of there and go to Zebra. Now in Zebra, I've told it to listen to channel three. And inside of Zebra, I'm using one of Ed Harvey's presets out of his Absolute Zebra collection, the Arps Kronos preset. And it's just on channel three and just want to let, let that come through for a few minutes or a few moments. all by itself nothing amazing now what I oftentimes do is also I will take a drum uh, a drum machine or, or a, a VST that handles drums I'm going to use microtonic today because sometimes um, just having something go in the background gives things a bit of context so I'm gonna let microtonic play and um So I had this particular pattern playing and I was just playing around trying to look for different presets that might sound nice on different channels. Um, and I took that information and if you grab a phrase, just left click it and drag it over to the next spot, uh, it'll make a duplicate of that phrase. So I drag it over to two because I wanted to keep one. And when I got to two, I hit the little die button over here and that gave me this phrase. I thought this one worked with those presets a little bit better so I wanted to keep it so once again I drug two and the three and uh, then when I got three I hit the little dice one more time Now, while the system is playing, you can, of course, adjust everything like you would normally adjust it. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to come to Zebra and you wanted to do a different presets, or if you wanted to go ahead and click in more lanes to come through, 
you are free to do so. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I do when I'm playing around and I'm noodling is I'll actually come over to the channel filter and set up a modulator here, like a, um, a beat LFO, whatever you want. And then I will attach that to different channels to turn them on and off so they're not always available. Adds a little bit of uh, randomness to things, which is, you know, neither here nor there, just something you can do. Now's the part that you, you know, I explained the why. Why do I have thesis, drive, and scalar in the phrase box instead of just putting simple chords onto tracks inside of clips? Well, it gives us, uh, or me, a little bit of flexibility down the line when I want to play around with stuff. So I'm just going to leave uh, um, addictive keys unmuted at the moment. And let's say, for instance, um, what was playing right now. I wanted to change up. I don't want the different chords. I don't, I don't want to listen to that same thing over and over again. Or I just want to try some different ideas. Well, I can come in the scalar. And I can have the same pattern coming out of thesis. So that's the third. Now it does the sixth. Now the third back to the six over here to the fourth now to the fifth six excuse me then to the seventh up an octave back to the third so that pattern that's coming out of thesis will be the same but I, I could go to uh, a different set of chords and put those in a lot faster then I can actually write or change the chords inside of a MIDI clip. Now I could play them off of a keyboard instead, but I don't always have a keyboard with me. And sometimes this produces happy little accidents. In addition to changing the information in the scalar, well, I can also change the information in the thesis. There's no reason that this has to be this pattern. I can come over here, and if I'm just looking for random ideas, I can hit the uh, randomize button, and it'll go out and throw in different patterns of its own. Now, right now, it's not quite jacking things up in the air a little bit, but, you know. One of the reasons that I've told it to go an octave down, and I'm adjusting the min and max here at the bottom, is... I'd like the notes that come out of thesis to stay in this gray area. This is where these chords down at the bottom get played. If they go outside of this gray area or they play the black keys, then they become just single notes that come through. So over in thesis, uh, let me close out a scalar right quick. It's not showing up for me. There we go. There shouldn't be any sharps or anything. It should all be um, C major, notes from the C major scale. And uh, and that way they only play the gray notes. Now, instead of doing wholesale uh, randomness, you can mutate as well, which will just kind of keep things in the same uh, general vicinity. Now, you see this uh, D and this G. They're way out, outside of where I, I, I should be. So I'm going to pull that back down a little bit. And that'll give me that. So there's information that you can change in thesis. There's information you can change in scalar. Phrase box also gives you the ability to change that information. Uh, of what it's going to look like when it comes out. So there's no reason why you shouldn't load up four, five, six, seven, maybe eight different VSTs and play around with what you have there. Um, there's no reason why you can't put out two theses. There's no reason why you can't have two scalars. You could have two scalars filling, in the, filling into phrase box and fill up each one of those eight, eight lanes every single time. Um, Thesis has the ability to put out chords in its bottom uh, performance section here. Uh, you can put out different chords. And I would advise you to first play this in and record uh, into clips to see what each one of these does. Or look at the thesis manual because that will give you an idea of, of what type of chords you would be looking at. So thesis can put out chords. And future videos that I put out about this, 
Um, some of the other MIDI plugins I have, like MIDI Madness, which I love to death, and Harvest, which I use a lot, both of those are capable of putting out chords as well, and both of them can feed Phrasebox. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of different ideas that you can achieve uh, with that one simple plugin being the go-between uh, and everything. So I, uh, I hope you got something from this, and uh, I hope you... We'll click the like button below or subscribe or tell somebody about the video and I hope you got something from it. And uh, I should have that next one up where we go in the phrase box in greater detail soon. Until then, thank you for watching my vid. See you soon. Bye-bye.